Hello, welcome to another edition of Visualizations with Juice. Today we'll look at a simple solution to a fairly simple problem. Resizable plugin windows. Loads of plugins come with a fixed sized window, and loads more come with predetermined sizes, like small, medium, and large. In a lot of code bases that I've seen, they achieve this by having a scale factor and rescaling and repositioning all of the components individually when this scale factor changes. Well, this method is error prone and it's easy to miss out in accounting for the scale factor on new components that may be added into the plugin. Now, when developing a plugin, if we choose to go with scalable vector graphics and have all the assets as SVGs, and if all of the components are positioned relative to the window size, and this task is super simple, it's a non-problem. We just enable resizability of the plugin and everything should work. Like in this example, the background is a simple color gradient rendered in code, and the slider asset is an SVG file, and the slider itself is positioned at the very center of the window, and its size is determined by the width and height of the window itself. So resizing this window has no issues. But consider the opposite, raster image assets and absolute positioning. In this example, the background image is a JPEG. The slider has loads of shadows and edge glows, which makes it impossible for it to be a vector image. And so it's a sprite sheet with several frames of the slider being represented for different slider values. And the position of this slider within the window is kind of non-trivial and hence absolute positioning is used here or preferred. If we try to scale this window, all manner of things go wrong. No aspect ratio is maintained and the background image goes all wonky. You are able to resize this window to a size bigger than the resolution of the image itself and so you're, you're now facing pixelation of the image. Furthermore, since the position of the slider is absolute, the slider remains exactly where it is, no matter what the size of the window is. So, if you find yourself in a position where you have raster images and fixed positioning in your plugin, this video elaborates on a simple mechanism to achieve resizing of the project of any size or complexity. We'll make sure that the aspect ratio is maintained, we'll have limits on how small a window can shrink to and how large it can grow, and we'll make sure that all the fixed positional components are uh, handled as well. So let's check out what we have initially. All of the source code is within the Git repository that's linked in the description below. But if you wanna follow along with me on this tutorial, you can check out the repository and check out the commit named initial commit. And that'll give you the code that I am showing you here. In the raster audio processor editor class, which is basically the root component that is responsible for drawing out the editor or, or the main window of the plugin. In here, the only component, the only child component that I have is a slider. And it's a custom slider called raster knob. In this class, it's basically inherited from a slider class. And the look and feel of the class has been customized and the draw rotary slider method has been overridden. You can examine this class more closely if you want to know how uh, a sprite sheet PNG file is converted into a slider, a rotary slider. And in the constructor, all I'm doing is I'm adding and making visible this slider component. I'm setting the size to 1200 pixels by 800 pixels. And in the paint method, I am drawing the background image, which we saw were the swirly stars. And in the resize method, I'm setting the slider's bounds to some fixed pixel positions. Now, let's briefly talk about how we're going to handle the resizing of fixed positional components. In our application, we have an audio processor editor, which is responsible for creating a desktop window and rendering out all of the components within it. All of the drawable children components are directly added to this editor. When we resize the window, it just it becomes difficult and error prone to resize and transform and reposition each of the individual child components. What we can do instead is to create a wrapper. A wrapper will now assume the role of the audio processor editor, and it will be its responsibility to create and manage a desktop window. 
and all of the displayable area of this window, including all of the components, will be added as a single juice component to this wrapper. The previous audio processor editor will just become a simple juice component now, and it'll be the only component added to the wrapper. Since the wrapper now contains a single full-sized component all the time, we can handle the scaling of this single component using affine transforms whenever the window wrapper is resized. Let's take these concepts and put them into code. Right, so we'll create a new class here, which is gonna be a wrapper component. So we'll call the class as a wrapped raster audio processor editor, which is a bit of a mouthful, and we'll inherit from the audio processor editor class, which is no different from the class that we're trying to replace here, which is the raster audio processor editor. In here, we'll have a constructor, which accepts the audio processor, and perhaps a resize method. Now, the only child component that this wrapper class should have is the entirety of the GUI component class that we were supposed to replace. Now, we'll do a couple of things here. We won't be inheriting from audio processor editor because the wrapper is. So we'll just be inheriting from uh, the component class, which is a parent class to all juice GUI elements. And then we'll rename this class, of course, uh, such that it reflects what it really is, which is basically a raster component rather than an audio processor editor. And in our wrapper, we'll, it will declare a new instance of the raster component. And in the source file, we'll generate the definitions for these methods. But firstly, we need to go back to the previous component that we meddled with, and we'll remove the reference of the audio processor editor, because it's no longer that, it's a, it's a simple component. And we'll remove the line which says re set resizable and set size, because they are usually applied only to the audio processor editor. Everything else should remain however it is. Now coming back to our wrappers constructors definition, we pass the processor into the audio processor editor, which requires it, and we pass the processor to the raster component as well that may or may not require it. In, in our case, it doesn't really require a processor. It's not really doing anything with the processor, but a more complicated project might require it. And we're just gonna try and retain the same structure as before. Now in the constructor, we will add and make visible the raster component. Next, this is where the magic begins. We'll firstly get the constrainer object. This will return a pointer to a bounds constrainer object um, that the window is using. And a constrainer is basically something that imposes restrictions, components, size, or position. So you can set limits on the constrainer, you can maintain its aspect ratio, and so on. And this is where we're gonna try and do this. Now the getConstrainer method gives us a raw pointer. And to make sure that we are safely accessing the raw pointer, we'll put it in an if block. So the if block will only get executed if the constrainer is not a null pointer. Now within this block, we'll call the set fixed aspect ratio method of the constrainer. Setting a value within this method, we'll make sure when the bounds are changed that it will lock the aspect ratio within which the bounds can move around. This is a ratio of the width over the height. But before anything else, we'll declare a couple of constant variables to maintain the original width and the original height of the plugin. So the original width will be 1200 pixels and the height will be about 800 pixels. This is determined by the size of our assets itself. So the background image is 1200 pixels by 800 pixels. So going above that would mean that you're pixelating the image. So we really wouldn't want to do that. Back in the constructor, to set the value of the aspect ratio, we'll choose the original width divided by the original height. And since it expects a double value, we'll cast both of these into doubles. We'll set some limits on how far we can drag this constrainer. So we can set the minimum width, the minimum height, and the maximum width, and the maximum height. So let's just say that we are able to, that we should be able to resize the window to about a quarter of the original height and width. We'll declare that here now. So original width by four, original height by four, and the maximum width and height would be the original width and height themselves. We wouldn't want to be scaling the application bigger than that. 
Next, we'll set the editor to be resizable. True for allowing the host to resize. And true again for allowing us to click on the bottom right corner of the comp component to get a resizer. And finally, we'll set the size of this editor to be the original width and the original height. Cool. So now let's define what the resized method should contain. The resized method would be called whenever the parent component would resize, either by the host or when you're manually resizing it yourself. So what we want to code here is basically when the wrapper component resizes, when the wrapper component's size is changed, we need to scale the raster component, which is the only child component within the wrapper. We need to transform or scale it corresponding to the size of the wrapper itself. I'll we'll call the set transform method on the component. And we'll use the affine transforms scale static method here. And we need to give it some scale factor. A scale factor of one means that there's no transformation that will happen. A scale factor below one will mean that it will be scaled downwards. And a scale factor above one will mean that the rest of the component will be enlarged. So how do we find the scale factor here? Well, it will be the current width of the container or the wrapper divided by the original width. You can either use current height divided by original height or current width divided by original width. It doesn't really matter because we are maintaining the same aspect ratio. So the, cur the current width, which you can get by get width, is always going to be less than or equal to the original width. That's because we have set the size limits such that the container will, the wrapper container will never go above the original width. So to make sure that the scale factor is a floating point number, we will cast get width into a float. And we'll pass the scale factor into the affine transforms scale method. And the final thing that we need to do is we need to set the bounds of the raster component. Now this is a bit unintuitive, but we need to set the bounds of the original width and the original height. That's because the raster component will always be full sized, but the transform method will be scaling it accordingly. So the raster component would occupy the entirety of the wrapper. So it'll start from a X and Y position of zero and zero, and then it'll have a width of original width and a original height. And to finish this off, we'll go to the plugin processor. And over here in the plugin processor, if we were previously referring to the raster audio processor component, and that's been changed now, renamed to raster component. But this is no longer an audio processor editor. We need to reference the actual wrapper class here, which is the wrap raster audio processor editor. Now that we've changed it, and if we run the application, we should be able to see some results now. So here's the editor. Uh, it's full sized at the moment with 1200 pixels by 800 pixels. But now when we try to resize it, the raster component within the wrapper is scaled accordingly. As you can see, even if I try to stretch it out sideways, it will always maintain the aspect ratio. The aspect ratio will never change. And you can also see that resizing it has a certain limits. So you can never push it down below a quarter of its width and height. And, and we can never enlarge it beyond 1200 by 800 pixels. And at any size, the component in inside it works quite well as well. And there are no problems with the interactability of the slider itself. Right, so we've achieved resizability of raster components now. And this is basically how you do it. There's one little caveat that we haven't discussed yet. I'll close the application at a lower size. Now when I reopen the application, I can see that it's being reset to its default position with full size. Let me demonstrate that again. I'll, I'll shrink it down a little and then close the application. And then when I reopen the application, it's back in its former size. Now, this is quite infuriating in an actual DAW environment because every time you close the editor and reopen it, it'll reset the size of the editor itself. So we need some way of making sure that we are saving the state of the scale factor of the application so that when we reopen the application, it'll open up with the scale factor set to what it was previously. Now, there are a couple of different avenues that you can use to save the state of the application. One, you could save the state of the application within the audio processor value tree state if you have one. 
but you have to make sure that you exclude it if you're trying to save presets and so on. So, so that when you're saving presets, you're not accidentally saving the scale ratio as well. Another way you could do it is through application properties. So you can create a new application properties file. It can be either user specific or common to all users. You can save the size ratio whenever it changes. Doing this would also mean that the size ratio is saved, not just for that particular instance of the plugin, but over all instances and over all plugin types as well. That, that will mean a standalone application and a plugin hosted within a DAW would both look at the same file for the size ratio. You may or may not want this behavior, but for this particular demo, we'll just be using application properties uh, to save the state. So within the wrapper, I'm gonna create a new, an instance of an application properties class. And within the constructor, we will initialize it. The application properties um, has a method where we can set the storage parameters and it requires some options to be filled out. So let's do that now. We'll create an instance of the options class, which is within the properties file class. It's a simple struct and uh, it has a few properties within it that we need to set. So the application name will just be our project name from the project info class. And we can set common to all users to be true. We can set the file name suffix to be settings. So the file will be saved as the project name dot settings. We should also set the OSX library subfolder to be application support. According to the documentation, if you're using property files on a Mac, you must set this value, otherwise it'll cause runtime assertions. The property files will basically be saved within application support. Let's see what other options we have. We have something like storage format, where you, you can decide what format to be written to, either XML, binary, or JSON. The default is XML and we'll leave it as is. I'll pass the options into the storage parameters. Where are we encountering the scale factor that we need to save? Well, that's within the resize method. So we'll head into the resize method and we need to be able to save the scale factor whenever it changes. So whenever the resize method is called, um, whenever we determine what the scale factor is, we need to save it within the application properties file. So we'll call the get common settings method, which will retrieve the properties file for all users. It asks if we want to retrieve the user properties if the common one is read only. And we say true to that. This will return a raw pointer of a properties file. Again, to safely access the raw pointer, we need to put it in an if block such that it will only get executed if the properties file is not null. And within it, we'll call uh, properties set value. And the set value method basically accepts a key and value. We'll set the key to be size ratio and we'll set the value to be the scale factor itself, which is a floating point number. That's great. So every time we resize the application, the properties file is updated with the scale factor. And finally, when we're instantiating the plugin or the application, when the window opens up, we need to look at what's inside the properties file and get the scale factor and use that scale factor to set the initial size of the plugin itself. So again, we'll do the same thing here. We'll say get application properties that get common settings. And within the if block, we'll say properties file dot get double value. And we can pass the key for which we want to get the value for. Well, the key is size ratio. Now we'll declare a size ratio variable right before this block and we'll initialize it to one. This will, this will make sure that even if the properties file is not readable, or doesn't exist, we'll have a default size ratio of one. And finally, we'll set the size by scaling the original width and the original height with the size ratio. Since a set size should accept integers, we just do some due diligence and cast these into integers. One thing that we haven't done here is to set a default if the size ratio doesn't exist. Over here, the get double value method would return the value associated with this particular key, which is size ratio. But what happens if the size ratio key doesn't exist? 
Well, we can return a default value if it doesn't exist. The default default value is zero, but we want it to be one because if the size ratio key doesn't exist, it should just it should just open up the application in full width. And I'll make sure that the size ratio is double as well instead of a float. All right, let's check it out now. Let's see if uh, what we've done has worked so far. I'll resize the application here and I'll close it. And if I reopen the application, well, you can see that it has indeed retained its size. Let's try that again with a smaller size. And we reopen the application. Well, it maintains the size as well. This is pretty much what we wanted and we've achieved it. Finally, to wrap things up, let's look at what is being saved in this file. I'll search for the project name dot settings and it's saved within the program data folder. And if you open it up, a single value key value pair named size ratio. And the value of the size ratio is 0.535 at the moment. So our application is basically reading from this file every time it starts up. Every time the constructor is instantiated, it reads this property files, get the size ratio and puts it in. And whenever the, whenever the application resizes, the value is written to this file. Of course, it's not a synchronous write operation. So this, this is a deferred write, meaning that the write operation is not really happening within the resize method itself. It's deferring it to a later point in time when it's able to perform a write operation on disk. So we don't really get any performance penalties when we're doing a lot of resizing. And that's about it really. This is a simple way of converting an existing project which has fixed dimensions and making it resizable. All you need to do is make sure that you set the aspect ratio right and you set the limits of the application such that it never exceeds the dimensions of the raster images that you're using. If it does exceed, you'll get pixelated results and it won't be all that great. But you can obviously always get higher, higher resolution images and make your application scale even larger than it is at the moment. Thank you for checking this out. If you did find this video helpful or enjoyable, please consider subscribing to the channel and checking it out if you fancy more such videos. I'll see you in the next one.